Hi everyone, in this problem we're going to find the cube roots of this complex number. So in order to find um, the roots of a complex number, the very first step is to write it in what's called trigonometric form or polar form. So let's go ahead and do that first and then there's a formula we can use that will allow us to find the roots. Uh, we're also going to leave our answer in trigonometric form, so we're not going to find like, uh, you know, an answer that doesn't involve uh, trig functions. Okay, so we'll start by writing it uh, in trig form. So the way I like to do that is I take my complex number and then I set it equal to what it means to be in trig form or polar form. It's R parentheses cosine theta plus I sine theta. R here is called the modulus and theta is called the argument. If you know some stuff about exponentials, this is the same thing as r e to the i theta. Right? e to the i theta is equal to this expression here. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and find r. So r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. It's a formula. So in our problem here, our x is negative 1 and our y is the square root of 3. So this is equal to the square root of negative 1 squared plus the square root of 3, and it's being squared. So this is equal to the square root of 1 plus 3. So that's the square root of 4, which is equal to 2. So our modulus, which is r, is 2. The next step is to work on finding theta. I like to do it from a very constructive approach. Like I like to like reason it. So we have negative 1 plus the square root of 3i. Now you just take it and you plug it back in. So 2 parentheses cosine theta plus i sine theta. Then you distribute the 2. So you would get 2 cosine theta plus 2i sine theta, okay, just by distributing the two. I'm going to go ahead and bring down the complex number and write it here again. So two complex numbers are equal when their real parts are equal. That would mean that 2 cosine theta is equal to negative 1. So 2 cosine theta equals negative 1. And their imaginary parts are equal. That would mean that 2 sine theta, so 2 sine theta, is equal to the square root of 3. We can solve this first one here for cosine. So we get cosine of theta equals negative 1 over 2. And over here we get sine of theta equals the square root of 3 over 2. Let's do a rough sketch of where we are on the complex plane now, so we can think about how to come up with this angle. So our complex number is this, which you can think of as an ordered pair, negative 1 comma square root of 3. So it's roughly somewhere over here. So that means that our angle is going to be here in quadrant 2, theta. Remember, it's also called the argument. This is pi over 2, and this is pi. The sine of theta equals the square root of 3 over 2 tells me something. I know from memory that the sine of pi over 3 is equal to the square root of 3 over 2. That means that we're looking for an angle in quadrant 2 that has a reference angle of pi over 3. That means that this angle here in green is our reference angle and it must be pi over 3. So that means if you take pi, which is the same thing as 3 pi over 3, and you subtract this piece, you're left with the angle you want, which is this blue one now, which is 2 pi over 3. And that would agree uh, with everything, right? Because x is negative. Remember, the unit circle cosine is the x, sine is the y. So everything is good. So our angle here is going to be 2 pi over 3. So that's the argument of the complex number. Okay, let's go ahead and write down what we have. We have negative 1 plus the square root of 3i, and it's equal to, and we have our formula now, it's equal to 2 parentheses 
cosine of 2 pi over 3 plus i sine of 2 pi over 3. So this would be the trigonometric form of the complex number. Let me scroll up to see all we've done is we've plugged it in here. Right? We have our r and our theta. So recall this is our theta, this is our argument, and our r is our modulus 2. Okay, now we have finally reached the point where we can find the roots. And we were looking for the cube roots. Now it doesn't really matter which one we're looking for. We can look for like the fifth roots. <laughs> let's change the problem. Let's look for the 20th roots. No, but let's stick to, <laughs> let's stick to the cube roots. Um, so the formula for the roots is, is given as follows. So it's the following. So all three of them, so z sub k, I'll call it z, it's equal to the nth root of r. So n here will be three because we're looking for cube roots. Okay, and then bracket, and then it's cosine of, and it's it'll be theta over n, and again, n will be 3, plus 2k pi over n. And there's lots of ways to write the formula. I think this is a pretty good one. And then I sine theta over n plus 2k pi over n. And uh, here r is given, r is 2. We're looking for cube roots, so n is 3. So let's plug in our r and our n. So zk, z sub k is equal to, so n is 3 because we're looking at cube roots. So cube root of 2 bracket cosine of, and then um, our n is 3 okay and our theta is 2 pi so let's think about that so we have theta over n let's do it on the side here so that'll be 2 pi over 3 over 3 so that's 2 pi over 3 when you divide by 3 you really multiply by the reciprocal so times 1 third so that's 2 pi over 9 okay so this piece here is going to be 2 pi over 9 so it'll be 2 pi over 9 okay plus 2k pi over 3 plus i sine and again we have 2 pi over 9 plus 2k pi over 3 bracket and by the way this is valid for k equals uh, 0 1 and 2 right because you start at 0 by the way so uh, this formula here I didn't write it I should have written it is valid for 0, 1, 2, all the way to n minus 1. This gives you the nth roots of a complex number. All right, let's find the first one. So I guess z sub 0, that would be our first root, would be the cube root of 2, bracket. So k is 0, so that's nice. So all of this just goes away. So we just get cosine of 2 pi over 9. You see, this is why we're leaving it in trig form. What's, what's the cosine of 2 pi over 9? I, I don't know. <laughs> plus i sine 2 pi over 9. You could probably work it out, but um, yeah, let's not this time. <laughs> so that's that's the um, first, uh, that's one of the cube roots. Let's do z sub 1. Same thing, cube root of 2. And we're basically going to take 2 pi over 9, and k is 1 here, and we're going to add 2 pi over 3. So let me do it on this, let me do it up here just to do the math, okay? So we have 2 pi over 9, just so we don't have to clutter the problem, and k is 1, so we have plus 2 pi over 3. All right, we're going to add these up in here, inside, inside our cosine function. So you can multiply this one by 3 over 3, so you get 2 pi over 9 plus 6 pi over 9. It's going to be 8 pi over 9, okay? So, so this will be the cosine of 8 pi over 9 plus i sine of 8 pi over 9. Long problems, right? These problems take a long time to do. So that's the second one. And one more and we're done. Just one more. So um, and then z sub 2 is equal to the cube root of 2 and then cosine and let's do the same thing. Let's do the math on the side. So we have we have 2 pi over 9 
plus. Now k is, is 2 now, so 2 times 2 is 4, so 4 pi over 3. Right, just plugging in 2 right here for the k, so we'll get 4. Multiply by 3 over 3, so this is 2 pi over 9 plus 12 pi over 9. That's going to be 14 pi over 9. So this is cosine of uh, 14 pi over 9 plus i sine 14 pi over 9. And that would be the complex roots. These are the cube roots of our complex number. So quite a bit of work. Uh, take some time. Um, it's a lot of writing. You got to be careful. Um, hopefully this video has been helpful. Good luck.